Welcome back to DXB Today, where we delve into the world of beauty. And right now, we're very happy to be speaking to a dermatologist. We already touched on the subject a little bit, but please join us in welcoming Dr. Mansi Mukherjee, dermatologist and medical head with Kaya Skin Clinic. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Faris, for having me here. Okay, so I've got a lot of questions, uh, but it's mainly going to be about male attention to their skin, because I feel like men, there's a lot of men that feel like, moisturizer, toner, we're not gonna do that kind of thing. Do you think it's important that men take better care of their skin? Absolutely, right? I mean, skin really is universal, right? And though we have different kinds of skins and different kinds of men, but eventually skin does need care. And as men, I mean, for the longest time, I see men who've not used absolutely anything on the skin. And you're really blessed because your skin is thicker and you have hair on the face that does protect you. But the sun is there the damage is there. So the earlier you start taking care of it, the better it is in the long run, right? You don't want to reach the age of 40 and say, oh my God, why didn't I do anything, mm -hmm. right? So it is better to always start early. While we're on the subject of men and skincare, like I know we're not going to do the major things, the yeah. masks, the spa yeah. treatments. So what are the basic things? Is it moisturizing? Is it sun lotion? What is it? I think cleansing, using a little toner if you have an oily skin, and then moisturizing and wearing a sun protection cream, I think is the basis and that should always be there. And also adding on, so if you have a more acne prone skin or if you have more oily skin, it depends on what your skin type is, then adding also a night routine of just a, a one particular serum or cream will just add to the benefit. But this is just the basic, that's it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mansi, I've been in Dubai for seven years now and I feel like from when I first moved here to now, there has been such an evolution of the aesthetic world. Yeah. Uh, tell me more about your history with uh, you know, aesthetics, particularly here in Dubai and, and the changes I guess you've seen. Dubai is beautiful in terms when it comes to aesthetics, right? Mm. Because if you see, Dubai is really the melting point of the world, right? Mm. There are over 200 nationalities that come in here. And uh, when I see a, a somebody from Europe, or somebody from the Arab world, or somebody from the Indian subcontinent, we're all different, right? Our bone structures are different, our skin quality is different, how our fat pads are placed is actually different, right? So we can't really just do the same treatment for everybody. Everybody needs a different kind of treatment. And this is really truly individualized to the need of the person that comes in to see me, right? But what I have seen with Dubai that has really evolved is the trends, right? Mm. So I mean, this is a place where every day there's a new trend and there's really an explosion of different kinds of trends, right? One day, I mean, you would have heard of the Barbie Botox, which is the mm. most recent, but there are others that keep coming up and every week I have a new product with a new trend, right? But it's really important, I feel, you know, as a dermatologist, that it's not for everybody. Mm. And right, it's really not good to just give in to the trend and just say, because my friend has done it, I should do it. Right. It's not really the machine. There's something really that's going on within your body that is really reflecting on your skin. Mm. So I think the treatment has to be more wholesome. One has to diagnose right and then treat right, yeah. right? And yes, I mean, it's trends galore in Dubai. Really. <laughs> I think I may be responsible for some of those trends. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> Lauren. So I wanted to know if someone really never got into skincare and they want to start today, they feel inspired by you. What are three ingredients that they should use in their skincare routine? So one is a good cleanser, mm -hmm. right? The second is, depending on the skin type, mm -hmm. it could be a moisturizer that contains hyaluronic acid, or if you have a more oily skin, could be an alpha or beta hydroxy acid. Mm -hmm. And the third most important, I would say, is sun protection. Right? So sun protection can never take a back seat, right? And I sometimes, you know, uh, I, have, I have a lot of lovely patients who come in and, you know, they love to suntan, right? Mm -hmm. And I wish I could just go to the beach, take, you know, uh, you know, like something that I can talk on loudly, like a loudspeaker and say, guys, if you're tanning today, remember, it's going to have a really bad effect in the future, mm -hmm. right? And you age much, much more when you've actually gone out into the sun and tanned yourself, right? So I wish I could tell this to the world and because really speaking, I mean, it's really important to do the sun protection, not only from a loss of collagen and loss of elastin point of view, but there are a whole lot of skin cancers that tend to occur because of this UV light exposure as well. So there's a medical aspect to it. Is there so, a safe way to tan though? So there are now tanning lotions that are available and just lotions that kind of give you the color on the skin without really having to sit mm. in the sun for the longest time. And I think we should go that way rather than, you know, just lie down on the beach. And I know, uh, you know, if you go to my country, okay, I will tell you, everybody wants 
light skin, mm -hmm. right? But then I see a whole lot of my lovely patients who actually want our kind of skin, right? Mm. Which is, it's, it's, uh, grass is always greener on the other side, <laughs> yeah. right? But I do want to say that uh, th there are safer ways of doing it and really not damaging your skin by st sitting out in the sun for the longest time. Mm. So we were talking earlier about the beauty trends and I know that you said, you know, not the same trend is for everyone, but one yeah. beauty trend that I'm particularly interested in is the Barbie Botox. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so Barbie Botox really, you know, it's also called trap tox, yeah. okay? So what happens is we have the shoulder muscle called the trapezius and we've been using it for years together, all right? It's typically used for shoulder pains, muscle spasms, for neck pains, for your migraines. That's where we inject that muscle mm -hmm. to just relax that muscle. That's what Botox does, right? It just simply relaxes the muscle. But you know, in the whole Barbie Botox trend, what because when we relax this trapezius muscle, you have this appearance of a slender neck, a longer neck and you know, more slender shoulders. Mm -hmm. So one tends to look thinner and slimmer, right? And that's why the whole Barbie, uh, you know, Botox thing that has come in. And while it is a trend, but it's again, like I said, not for everybody, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I mean, I used to do it for more men in the past, right? For the pains and the aches. Uh, I, I've done it for a, a whole lot of women as well to, in fact, reduce that shoulder appearance that is there where you have this hump sitting there on the shoulders. But again, it's not for everybody and it, it has to be done very, very skillfully. Because remember, if it goes into a surrounding muscle, it can actually cause weakness. And again, not everybody needs that Botox there because if you do that, you may actually have more weakness on that muscle and the loss of appearance of that shoulder as well. Mm. So it has to be diagnosed right and done right as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I just want to add to that because I think that's a really, really important point. And Lauren, you can add to this as well, that you know, going to the right person is very, very important in this line of work. Uh, what would you suggest to people? How can they do their due diligence, I guess, when, when approaching a clinic? So again, I would really say, I mean, if you're going to get it, get something injected into your body, right? It's important, so I call it ethics, right? Ethics and aesthetics, right? Mm. And it's important to find the right person. Understand from your friends who do, do they, you know, possibly go to. Google about that doctor. Read about what that doctor has done in the past as well. And not just go on social media and decide. Right? And you know how easy it is to change pictures on social media, right? So I don't think social media is the answer to actually finding the right person. I think it's really important to know what is the education of this doctor, what is the experience of this doctor. Do you have any people whom this doctor has treated where, you know, doctors done the right, res the right thing for the patient? And I think as a doctor, many a times I say no, right? And I think that's also very important mm -hmm. because eventually I'm treating a human and I, I want that human to remember me even 10 days, ten years later, mm -hmm. having said that that doctor did the right thing for me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The other thing that people try and look for is a lot of offers here and there, right? So yeah. you see a very good <laughs> offer and you jump to the offer. But really, you, do you know what is really going in that offer? What is really going in your face? Your eyes are closed when you're getting injected, mm -hmm. right? So you don't know what's really getting into you. Mm -hmm. so I really think it's important to find the right place, the right doctor when you actually do anything for your body. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah, so I true. I always tell my girlfriends, if it's a buy one, get one free, don't do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's something to live by. I'm worried we're going to see Faris tomorrow with a thinner neck, though. Yeah. <laughs> so that might be happening. Uh, Dr. Mansi, I want to thank you so much for your time and your expertise here thank today. You, thank, thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now it is time for the Spotlight, where we are focused on the owner of a well-being center here in Dubai, which offers a unique range of therapeutic and healing services in the heart of the city. Meet holistic therapist Zankana Mystery from the Essentia Wellbeing Center. Hi, I'm Zankana Mystery. You can call me Zan. I'm a proud owner of Essentia Wellbeing Center, and we are in the business of human empowerment through transforming their lives. Most people come to us under severe duress. They're defeated by life. They feel hopeless and sad, sometimes even depressed. And after sessions, after their therapy, they often tell us, why did we not know about this before? <laughs> they did not have to suffer. And that is the gap I want to cover. 
The only milestone I believe in is the sparkle in their eyes, is the smile that says that I am confident again, I can live again and I'm happy again. And we achieve those milestones on a daily basis. I believe we have created a healthy community. The only challenge I believe that we have at the moment is the unawareness. We need this awareness of possibility of living their life through these therapies to be out there for everyone. Of course, to expand this community, I would like to see Dubai on the world map for wellness education, for wellness tourism, so that more people can benefit from it not only individuals, but also corporations. Dubai is home. It's a home away from home. I have made not only friends, but I've also made a family of community, of therapists and my clients together. Thank you very much, Zankana. And right now I'm very excited for the roundup. So Amy, what have you got for us today? Well, tradition meets technology in the evolving spa and wellness landscape. So my question for you guys is how are spa and wellness businesses successfully integrating mind and body wellness technologies while maintaining their traditional values? I think that's a question for Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the one thing that I've seen really pop up is lasers. And I love a good laser. I've gotten several, a lot of times because Cosmo sends me to go get them and review them. But there are some that I find that even a lot of my girlfriends, everyone is going to get them. Like picogenesis is a great one for anyone that has some pigmentation or underlying pigmentation from the sun. Mm -hmm. And it really just eradicates it from the skin, giving you just a very nice, clear complexion. And Morpheus 8 is a very oh, yes. popular one at the moment. It's a bit intense. Mm -hmm. And I know that in other countries, you can go get it with some gas. They'll give you a little bit of laughing gas, but here we're tough. <laughs> yeah, yes. I was going to say, uh, I wish they'd have given me laughing gas when I did Morpheus. <laughs> but, but these technologies, I mean, are ever evolving. I went to a cryo chamber a few weeks ago, and even something like that, I mean, the technology behind something like that and increasing our wellness. Tell us what it is, because is that like the ice, the ice bath? Yes, it's not an ice bath. It's an ice room. Okay. So it's minus 110 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> you're you're in there and you're trying to breathe through it. Your whole body's literally freezing up. But it's so good for your skin. Yeah. So good for you know calming you down. They say you do it five minutes in the morning and you're set. Yeah. They say that I when I went and got it done, it was for three minutes and it was the longest three minutes of my life. <laughs> they actually played Backstreet Boys for me. <laughs> but. When I had it, they told me that there's so many people that have chronic issues as well with their bodies and they do this every single morning and it's been a really nice alternative healing type of modality. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm, I've never tried it. Maybe you have, Lauren, the uh, sensory deprivation pods where they it's completely black, there's no sound, you're in water, have you seen those? I haven't done that, but I meditate a lot and I feel like I put mm. myself into one. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it, That'll do it for sure. Uh, well look, after the break, we will be talking to a wellness coach who uses Feng Shui to improve well-being and we're also going to get some bikes in the studio as Farrex is gonna go for a bit of a spin like no other, so don't go anywhere.